So here we have a couple of examples on how to calculate uh, the oxidation numbers of uh, atoms in different compounds, okay? Now obviously the first two we have here, the first two examples, or this first example in particular, is not a compound, it's a single ion, but it's a useful exercise to do, okay? Now we know that, uh, you know, the sum of all the, all the, uh, all the oxidation numbers of atoms in a compound, or you know, here in a in a single in a in a monoatomic ion, or an ion with one atom in it, we know that all the oxidation numbers in here have to add up to the charge. Okay, so we've got one atom in here. Yeah, you know, we've got one sodium atom in this kind of in this ion, and we've got a charge. We've got a positive, a single positive charge. Okay, so therefore, for that reason, we know that the uh, oxidation number of sodium is going to be plus one, okay? That's very exciting, woo! Hard stuff there. Okay, it's very straightforward, but it's a useful exercise to do, okay? The, uh, the iron has a charge of plus one, so therefore the oxidation state of the, uh, of the iron, or of the sodium in this iron, is plus one, okay? Same, same sort of deal for this, this, uh, this element. This again is not a compound, but it is a molecule, okay? We have a structure like this, Okay, and because it's symmetrical, we know that the oxygen atoms are going, they're all in the same boat. Okay, each, the two oxygen atoms are in the same situation. They're both bonded to another oxygen atom via three covalent bonds. Okay, for this reason, we know that uh, their, elect, their oxidation numbers are going to be the same. Okay, and so if their oxidation numbers are the same and the net charge on the oxygen molecule is zero, then the oxidation number of each oxygen, so I'll write out of each oxygen atom, is going to be zero. Okay, again, exciting stuff there. So this is zero. Okay, so these two are pretty straightforward. So now we're going to get into some actual compounds and we're going to figure out how to do those. Okay, so here we've got an ammonia molecule. Okay, the structure isn't particularly important, but it's kind of it helps us visualize the electronegativity in action. Okay, so same way we have with water. If we look at the electron, uh, if we look at each covalent bond as a pair of electrons, then we know that the electrons are going to kind of get pushed towards one of the one of the atoms. Okay, in this case, nitrogen is here on the periodic table. Okay, and hydrogen is here. Okay, so if we look at this, we say nitrogen is more electronegative. It's further in that direction. Okay, so it's going to have uh, whatever oxidation number it likes. Okay, so if the nitrogen were an ion what charge would it have? Okay, that's the question we're asking. And in this case, we know that nitrogen has five, it's in group five. Okay, it's in group five, so it has five outer shell electrons. It wants to have eight. So that means if it adds, if we add three electrons to it, a, nitri a nitrogen ion is going to have a charge of three minus, isn't it? Okay, and so that means, because it's the most electronegative, it gets to have whatever, whatever oxidation number it wants. Okay, and for that reason, because nitrogen likes to form a, a, an ion with three minus charge, then the oxidation number is going to be minus three. And remember, we're changing the sign. Instead of having three minus, we write minus three to avoid confusion. Okay, so now that we've got nitrogen with minus three, okay, we know that the three hydrogens, the sum of their oxidation numbers is going to equal plus three. Okay, and so because we see here, they're all sort of in the same situation. They're all bonded to a nitrogen bonded to the same nitrogen, in fact, they're all going to have the same oxidation number, and we know that the maximum oxidation number of any hydrogen is one, because it's in group one. Okay, and for both of those reasons, we can figure out that the oxidation number of each hydrogen atom is going to be plus one. Okay, so that's done. So all three hydrogen atoms have oxidation numbers of plus one, and the single nitrogen atom has an oxidation number of minus three. Okay, the last one, slightly more complex one, okay? We know that this is phosphoric acid. We know that phosphoric acid is technically a molecular compound. However, although it's a molecular compound, it can break down into ions, much like other acids, which are molecular compounds, okay? So here we have, we, we can break phosphoric acid down into three hydrogen ions, okay, and one phosphate ion, okay? And so the same way we dealt with sodium earlier, we said sodium is a cation with a charge of plus one, okay, these we have three hydrogen cations, each with charges of positive one. For that reason, the oxidation number of each hydrogen is going to be plus one, okay. 
So what you see, what you may have noticed already, the way we've done this is when we have, okay, in this case, this is a molecular compound, okay, we've broken it up into its ions and we're dealing with each ion individually, okay, the same way if we have an ionic compound, we would break it up into its ions and deal with each ion individually, okay. Um, so here we have the phosphate ion, okay, we look for the most electronegative uh, element, so we know that oxygen is here on the periodic table, all right, and we know that phosphate is here. So not phosphate, phosphorus. We know phosphorus is here. Okay. So in this direction, we know that oxygen. We can see that oxygen is more electronegative. Okay. And we know that oxygen likes to form oxide ions. So O2 minus. This is the kind of ion that oxygen likes to form. So if this oxygen were an ion, what charge would it have? It would have a charge of two minus. So therefore, its oxidation number is minus two. Okay. So we, now, now that we have four of those. Okay, we see that the total uh, oxidation, the sum of the oxidation numbers of all the oxygen atoms is minus 8. Okay, so we sum up, because there's four oxygens, they each have an oxidation number of minus 2, their sum is minus 8. Okay, and now what we want to get to, okay, is 3 minus, okay, because that's the charge of the iron. So if we've got minus 8, and we want to get to minus 3, that means the phosphorus must have an oxidation number of plus 5. Okay, we've worked that out logically. Okay, we've got minus 8 from the oxygens, because they're the most electronegative. Okay, and we want to get that back up to minus 3. Okay, so that means that phosphorus must have an oxidation number of plus 5. So the way you can think of this is, you know, phosphorus, yeah, it probably, it likes to form, you know, if it were to form an ion, it would form a negative ion by gaining electrons. Okay, because it's in this group 5 here. However, because it's less electronegative, than the oxygen because it's further this way than the oxygen. Okay, it's effectively getting bullied by the oxygen. The oxygen's here, it's super electronegative, so it does whatever it wants. It gets the oxidation number of minus two that it wants. And as a result, phosphorus doesn't get a choice. Phosphorus has to have an oxidation number of plus five in order to fit in with the oxygen, okay, and form a phosphate ion with a charge of three minus. Okay, so there we've done through gone through a few examples of uh, how to work out the oxidation numbers of the different atoms in an element, okay, and hopefully that uh, gives you a bit of help when it comes to oxidation numbers.